Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, peace and blessings upon each and everyone here as sees this video. I want to start by saying, La ilaha illallah, wa shadowana Muhammad an abduhu wa rasulu, I bear witness there's no God other than Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final servant and seal of all prophets. I want to talk today about hijab. This is a very, very serious topic, and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts my efforts, forgives me for any mistakes that I might make. This is something we really need to talk about. Today, I've seen some, some comments online where someone with, that is a new revert to Islam, um, very, at the very early stages of accepting Islam, was being ridiculed for not wearing the hijab. And so we need to talk about this because there's no compulsion in religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, let there be no compulsion in religion. And this means that whatever one does in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the lack thereof is between that individual and Allah. We have no right as any individuals to pass judgment on anyone, uh, especially someone that is newly accepting Islam. And so we need to use some little bit of wisdom in dealing with, with, with reverts in particular. And so if you are a revert, um, alhamdulillah, I welcome you to Islam. It's a beautiful way of life. Praise be to Allah. And I, I encourage you to take one step at a time. Take one step at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't let anyone else overwhelm you. Um, as long as you bear witness that our Lord, our God, our Creator is one, and you accept the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and all of the Prophets, Everything else will come in a lost timing. I do encourage you to continually seek knowledge and to um, just, you know, ask ask Muslims um, why this happens or why this happens, you know, and try to seek knowledge at all times. And I do encourage you to wear the hijab and to try to carry yourself uh, modestly. But let's talk about what the, the hijab is. One can carry themselves modestly with or without the head covering. Don't don't be confused about what I'm trying to say here. I'm not suggesting that I think that um, the hijab is not necessary. I absolutely do think the hijab is necessary, and I want to, I want to commend my Muslim sisters that do wear the hijab on a day-in, day-out basis, because in this world today, we have people once again being um, ridiculed for wearing the hijab, and we have people being criticized for not wearing the hijab. And so, for those that do, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, um, it is a sign that you are an ambassador for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an ambassador for Islam. Just like when I wear the kufi, I have to remind myself that I am trying to um, be the best Muslim that I can be. And we should try to be doing that with, with or without the head covering. And we should do this at all times as Muslims. Um, but when we do dress in this manner, it, it's, a, it's a further reminder to yourself and it's a demonstration to other people that, you know what, I'm trying my best to live in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is, it actually encourages other people to do the same thing. Alhamdulillah. So the hijab is more than just the covering of one's, one's body parts. We should absolutely do that, of course, because we live in a society where women are... Um, uh, taken advantage of because of their looks. We see this in cheerleading. We see this on news broadcasts where uh, it seems that the, the more attractive women are the, are the, 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 we see a lot of attractive women in the news media um, where women are being exploited for their looks. We see this in the movies. We see this in music. Just on and on we see these types of things happening where the women are actually being exploited in society and it causes some people to feel, some women to feel that they have to dress a certain way in order to get it attention instead of um, carrying themselves in modesty and, um, you know, in with dignity and respect for themselves as well as society. They feel like they have to, to carry themselves in a manner in which society sets the standard. And Alhamdulillah, we don't have to do that in Islam. Nor should we overburden people and put too much on their shoulders at one time. It's like if someone is new to Islam and you try to put a stipulation on them, tell them that, tell them that they have to recite the prayer in Arabic. Well, of course, they most likely are not Arab speaking. They're not, they're not Arabs. And so they don't naturally speak the Arab, Arab, Arabic language. And so uh, to put that stipulation on someone is is put, putting too much on their shoulders. We shouldn't do that. And um, we have to let them take one step at a time 
and allow allow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them and we should be the best examples that we could possibly be in in trying to help them along and answer any questions that they might have and not overburden them and not criticize them for not living the way you might think that they should be. I mean most likely each and every one of us could be doing better ourselves. So um we gotta keep that in mind. Let's go to this verse of the Quran. These verses of the Quran in Surah Al Araf uh, Surah 7 or chapter 7 ayah 26 through 29 it says O children of Adam we have bestowed raiment upon you raiment is clothing or apparel upon you to cover your shame as well as to be an adornment to you but the raiment of righteousness that is the best Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us yes we do want you to cover yourselves we do want you to carry yourself in modesty and uh, to protect yourselves and society as a whole from evil inclinations in regards to sexual um, uh, thoughts and, and interactions. Um, but the, the obedience and trying to live righteousness, that's the best of protection. Because one who tries to live in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tries to, to keep him on their mind at all times, have the dhikr of Allah, to have the remembrance of Allah on their minds at all times, they're naturally going to cover themselves and their evil inclinations spiritually as well as physically. Alhamdulillah. So if you're a new revert to Islam, take your time one step at a time. Don't let anyone tell you that you have to do this or have to do that immediately. Take your time, seek knowledge. And if you're a Muslim born into Islam, give these people some space and let them let them move along the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at their own pace because it boils down to this that many of these people are coming from other religions or maybe no religion at all. If they're coming from other religions, then they have pressures on them from their family members and their friends and this and on down the line. And it's it's hard for many people to cope with that. I myself um, have had many, many so called friends and family members completely turn against me because I am Muslim. And instead of coming and asking me what is this Islam stuff all about, uh, they just like this guy, he's he's he must be uh, uh, he must be crazy or something, and so they just completely abandoned me. Alhamdulillah, I'd rather have a lost one with any day than any of these people. And not that I don't appreciate these relationships, but I'd rather have my God, my Creator, the one that I'm going to return to on on the day of judgment, than I, I would any of these people. So praise be to Allah. Uh, but not everyone has that that strength within them. It takes time. It takes discipline and development it takes studying islam it, stu it takes going to prayer constantly uh to develop that that type of, of of attitude and that type of relationship with allah and so you've got to give new reverts time and if you're a new revert i encourage you once again to seek knowledge continually and to um just take one step at a time once again praise be to allah it goes on to say in this verses once again but the raiment of righteousness that is the best such are among the signs of Allah that they may receive admonition. It says, O ye children of Adam, let not Satan seduce you in the same manner as he got your parents out of the garden. Talking about Adam, peace and blessed be upon him, and Hua, his wife, or Eve, praise be to Allah, and may Allah be pleased with her. It says, uh, how he got your parents out of the garden, stripping them of their raiment to expose their shame. It wasn't talking about their, their clothing because initially they, they were naked in the garden. He stripped them of their raiment, their protection, when he seduced them into consuming the fruit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them not to consume. They stepped out of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They made a bad judgment, and therefore they exposed themselves and opened themselves up to attack. And in the same manner, um, we open ourselves up to attack if we dress provocatively. We open ourselves up to attack if we don't uh, carry ourselves in the best of manners in Islam. Matter of fact, I know many, Mus I say many, I, say, I know a number of Muslim sisters that I see online that wear hijab constantly, but they use very foul language. They make very ugly posts and they use foul language. They say things they shouldn't. And I'm not judging anyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on each and every one of us on the day of judgment. But I'm trying to make a point. It doesn't matter what has, someone is wearing. And don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting that people shouldn't cover themselves. By no means they shouldn't wear the hijab. Once again, I commend all the sisters out there that are wearing hijab constantly. Uh, it's a very courageous act, especially in society, society today. But if you're wearing hijab and you're using foul language and you're doing this and you're doing that, 
that thing, doing things you shouldn't be doing. You're just wearing it as a fashion statement. And so we have to be conscious of that and be understanding of what these verses in particular are saying. Once again, O children of Adam, let not Satan seduce you in the same manner as he got your parents out of the garden, stripping them of their raiment to expose their shame. For he and his tribe watch you from, from a position where you cannot see them. We made the evil ones friends only to those without faith. When they do aught that is shameful, they say, they say, um, Alhamdulillah. When they do aught that is shameful, they say, we found our fathers doing so, and Allah commanded us thus. Say, nay, Allah never commands what is shameful. Do you say of Allah what you do not know? Say, my Lord hath commanded justice, and that you set your whole selves to him at every time and place of prayer, and call upon him, making your devotion sincere in, as in his sight, such as he created you in the beginning, so shall you return. What do these verses say? Nay, Allah never commands that what is shameful. Do you say of Allah what you do not know? Say, my Lord hath commanded justice, and that you set your whole selves to him at every time and place of prayer, and call upon him, making your devotion sincere as in his sight, such as he created you in the beginning, so shall you return. So Allah's telling us in this Quran, in, in the, these verses of the Quran, that it's not so much about what you wear. What you wear is very, very important, absolutely. Matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the men to lower their gaze and to protect their private parts first in the Quran, telling the men to protect themselves, cover themselves, lower their gaze, protect yourselves from the evils of shaitan, and, and therefore... Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to don't allow Satan to seduce you in any form or fashion, not physically, mentally, or spiritually. And that's what these verses are talking about. It's not so much what someone's wearing or what they're not wearing. Of course, we need to be covered up, but we need to be mindful of how we carry ourselves, whether we have a hijab on or whether we do not have a hijab on, whether I have this kufi on or I have that my Texans cap or my Astros cap over there. Um, it, it doesn't matter. I have to still carry myself with dignity and respect and carry myself as an ambassador of Islam and try to share and demonstrate the beauty of Islam to all people at all times, no matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm engaged in. And so for the Muslim sisters um, that wear the hijab, and if you don't wear the hijab all the time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is your Lord, your God, your creator. And that is all between you and Allah, not between anyone else in you and Allah. It's only between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's closer to you than your own juggler vein, he tells us in the Quran. And so he's conscious of all that we what we reveal and all that we conceal. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, he knows what we know and he knows what we're thinking and no one else has a right to tell you what to do or what not to do other than to try to guide you to what's right to the straight path but not to try to force you to do anything there's no the Allah tells us in the Quran let there be no compulsion in religion Alhamdulillah I leave you by saying assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh peace and blessings upon each and everyone who hears or see this video I ask you to subscribe like and share this video all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I do this all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask that he accepts my efforts to share the beauty of Islam I ask him to forgive me for any mistakes that I might have made if you share this video and it influences anyone in any positive way, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you just like he will reward me. So please subscribe, like, and share this video, all for the sake of our God, our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah wa shadow na Muhammadan abduhu wa razulu. I bear witness no, no, there's no God other than Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad is his final servant and the seal of all prophets. Peace and blessings be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.